Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, beloved, I want to welcome you to this week's episode of uh, Glowing Podcast, the official podcast channel of Global Emancipation Ministries, Calgary, Canada. We want to give glory to the Almighty God for His goodness, uh, His faithfulness, and for His mercies. It's because He has kept us alive. That's why we are still here. And uh, it's a prayer that the plans and purposes of God concerning our lives will come to pass. We will not be alive in vain. We will be alive to declare His glory in this land of the living, in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate you for uh, taking time to listen to the episodes that have been presented on this channel. We want to appreciate you. We want to believe you are also applying uh, the principles the Lord is making available. And it's our prayer that as you keep doing that, your testimonies will keep manifesting and others will see uh, the beautiful things that the Lord is doing in your lives in the name of Jesus. Uh, mandate is still liberating men through the knowledge of the truth. And uh, that's exactly what we are doing uh on this particular channel, we are making the revelation knowledge of God's word available, capable of generating freedom in every aspect of our life so that we can live uh, the, the life that the Lord has ordained for us to live. Uh, you can, of course, you must have been listening via a particular platform, but we want to encourage you to subscribe to this podcast channel on the same platform you have been using or probably on any other one you choose depending on the device you are using so you can do that on Anchor, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts or any other platform that's available to you. We don't want you to miss out on any episode the Lord might be bringing your way on a particular week so that's why we're encouraging you to subscribe and to also tell others around you to subscribe as well. Uh, of course it's free of charge so we just want you to subscribe so that you get fresh episodes delivered to you directly. Uh, so you don't miss out on anyone the law might be um the law might have ordained to use to say to you to answer any particular question in your life and it's a prayer that you will not miss out on anything the law might be bringing your way in the name of jesus if you wish to learn more about this ministry just visit our website at www.glem.org www.glem.org you'll be able to have access to all the all manners of information uh, on resources, anything you want to know about the ministry and even want to be blessed with uh, resources and materials everything is there so kindly take time and visit that uh, website and also want to encourage you to follow us on social media you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, like our pages uh, you can do that also on Instagram uh, LinkedIn, connect with us uh, tell us what God is doing in your life Okay, and uh, even if you have uh, maybe there are certain things you want to share online, you want to communicate to us, you want to tell us some of the things you wish to know more about the Word of God or probably just want to partake of all the beautiful updates and materials that are being shared via this particular um, social media platform. It will be wonderful you connect with us so that you don't also miss out. You can keep abreast of spiritual, important spiritual updates as they become available. It's a prayer that as you do all this, as you take advantage of all these wonderful opportunities around you to be blessed, it's a prayer that you will be blessed indeed and you will not miss any of your portions in the name of Jesus. Uh, so on that note, we want to welcome you once again to this week's episode of Glenn Podcast and uh, the Lord is said to bless us again today. But as our custom is, uh, we're going to take a moment to commit this session to the hands of the Lord in prayer. So let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you because you are a very good God. We, your children, are saying thank you. We appreciate you for your goodness. Thanks for your mercy. Thanks for your loving kindness. Thanks for preserving our lives to witness yet another week in the land of the living. Thanks for all you've taught us in time past. Thanks for grace to apply. And thank you for the beautiful testimonies. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We commit this uh, week's episode into your end. Lord, speak to us again. Give us fresh insight into your word. Let us hear your voice in the name of Jesus. So that by the time this session is over, we we'll look back and have all the cause to glorify your name. Thank you so much for always answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So once again, you are welcome to this week's episode of Glenn Podcast. And uh, today we're going to be looking at a very important topic. A very important topic. And uh, the topic we'll be considering in this episode is look and live. We're going to be considering look and live. Uh, we're going to be taking our text from Numbers chapter 21. 
numbers chapter 21 and uh, we'll just read verse 1 to 9 numbers chapter 21 we're going to be reading verse 1 to 9 and for the purpose of this episode we'll be using the new king james version it says the king of ara the canaanite who dwelt in the south heard that the uh, that israel was coming on the road to atharim then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. Verse 2. So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver these people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of that place was called Omar. Verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. By the way, what they were calling worthless bread was actually the manna the Lord was supplying them. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Verse 7. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. Verse 9. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had beaten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. May the Lord bless his words and heart in Jesus' name. That was Numbers 21. We read verse 1 to 9. And we are looking at look and live. It's very important to note, before we go deep into, uh, before we go any further into this episode, that sin always attracts judgment. Never forget that. Sin always attracts judgment. There is always a penalty for sin. And uh, the way we're going to approach this episode, we're going to be learning some lessons uh, from this numbers 21, 1 to 9. We're going to be learning some lessons there. And uh, if you understand the way the children of Israel behaved, the way God responded, uh, you may want to relate that with your own life to know how to behave and how God is likely to respond to such behavior. Okay? Now, I've just said, sin always attracts judgment. Now, before the Lord sent those fiery serpents, those poisonous snakes to deal with his people, the Israelites, they had sinned. If you were following the text, before the Lord sent those fiery serpents to, you know, bite them and that caused a lot of them to die, they actually sinned. Read that in Numbers 21 that we read, verse 5 to 7 confirms it. They started by getting discouraged. They lost their patience. And discouragement, if not wisely and prayerfully handled, can make you turn your back against the only one who can help you. The God who had been helping them the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt with a mighty outstretched arm, who did all manners of miracles, who dealt with Pharaoh until Pharaoh released them. The God who parted the Red Sea for them. The God who had been fighting their battle. The God who kept them in the wilderness. The God who rained down manna for them. They didn't have to go to any farm. All they needed to do was to wake up and go collect manna and they were eating. That God who had been faithful, who had been keeping them, who had provided them with a pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night so that no animal attacks them. The God who had been destroying nations and giving them victory. That same God who had been helping them. When they became discouraged, they spoke against that God. Discouragement is one of the is one of the major instruments of attack in the hands of the devil if you don't understand how to manage discouragement if you don't prayerfully and wisely undo discouragement it can make you turn your back on the only one who can help you you start seeing your helper as your problem 
that's what happened to these people. The only God who could, who could solve their problem, they started speaking against that God and even against the prophets. Moses who happened to be the representative of God in their midst. Discouragement. That's how it started. They started by, you know, getting discouraged. They lost their patience. Then they graduated. They started complaining. They were lamenting. They were even blaspheming. They were blaspheming against God and even the servant. Numbers 21.5 They were like blaming God for delivering them from captivity in Egypt. That was what the children of Israel were doing before God had to send fiery serpents into their midst to bite them and to kill them. That was their punishment. Death is always the ultimate penalty of sin. Don't forget it. I told you sin always attracts judgment. But it's very important to know that death is always the ultimate penalty of sin. The Bible said the soul that sinned shall die. The soul that sinned shall die. The soul that sinned shall die. And death is still the result of sin. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. You can look at Romans 6, 23a. Okay? Death is always the ultimate penalty of sin. Now, note that those serpents, and is you know, the serpents is in plural, not one, not just one snake. Those serpents take note that they had to bite them first before they died. That's what the Bible says. The serpent had to bite them first before they actually died. What does that, what does that imply? If you notice, the devil has been described as the ancient serpent is the very old serpent that's his title you can really look at revelations 12 9 revelation chapter 12 verse 9 the devil is the old serpent so it implies that they were allowed those snakes were allowed to torment those sinners before they actually died and it simply means the devil as the old serpent is also allowed to torment sinners with several agents of death before actually dying There are agents of death. There are things that there are things that happen before the death actually comes. And the devil, as the whole serpent, is equally allowed and permitted to torment sinners with several agents of death like sicknesses, diseases, affliction, infirmity, poverty, demonic oppressions, and all manners of satanic invasion. And all of this will ultimately result in what? Death. He sends the agents like sickness that's the biting and after some time the sickness will lead to death that's the actual death that's the actual penalty if you look at first corinthians 15 56 first corinthians 15 56 the bible says the sin is the sting of death okay sin is the sting of death what does that mean it means sin bites and leads to death there's going to be a biting before the actual death that's the way it works but ultimately death death is the penalty of sin we need to understand that now another thing we are we another thing we notice from this numbers 21 you know we are learning from numbers 21 uh this encounter of the children of israel you know when the when they sinned against the lord how the lord dealt with their sin we are also learning we can also learn from this scripture that only god has the cure to sin and his penalty that's it only god has the cure to all to sin and his penalty god is the one who judges sinners and is the only one who can remove the judgment <laughs> when you sin against god is the one who judges you and is the only one who has the power to also remove the judgment. The people came to Moses when they realized that they were dying. The people came to Moses so he could beg God on their behalf. And God who sent the judgment told Moses what to do to avert the judgment. He alone has the cure to sin and death, which is death, which is sin's penalty. No other person. No other person, no reverend father, no pastor, no bishop, no group, no religion, no denomination, no prophet, nobody can provide a cure for sin. 
no one only god can provide cure for sin and just like he provided the cure for the sin of these uh, children of israel in the wilderness he has provided jesus christ his only begotten son as the solution to the sins of mankind jesus christ is the solution i said only god judges sinners and is the one who can remove the judgment is one who can make a way when the children of israel when they sinned against the lord the lord sent fiery serpents among them the serpents were biting them and they were dying the bible said they, a lot of them were, they, a lot of them died now when god was going to take away the judgment when god was actually going to remove the judgment after they realized that they had sinned and they they begged moses they apologized you no know, we 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 have we have messed up we have we have sinned moses we are sorry please help us beg god and they and moses interceded and god had their prayer god told moses what to do in order to take away the judgment and that was exactly what moses did now in this dispensation God has provided Jesus Christ. You know what is in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the cure to sin in this dispensation is Jesus Christ. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he died. That's why he paid. He paid the, he paid the price in full. And he announced to everybody who cared to listen, it is finished. If it was remaining, Jesus would have said so. He said it's finished and gave up the ghost and came back on the third day to justify to justify us. And it's even now the right hand of the Father, you know, interceding. So God has created solution for the sin of the world by making Jesus available. Take note of that. It's very important. Now, it's very important to note. I need to show you something quickly here before we proceed. Look at it this way. They sinned. Good. God punished their sin by sending serpents, snakes into their midst. Okay? And the snakes were biting them because that was the assignment. The snakes were sent to bite and kill. So the snakes were biting and after biting, the people, the victim will die. It's a process. So the snake is biting. That's the that's the first job. Then, as a result of the biting, definitely there would have been some venom in the body and all those things. You know, the 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 snake would have put some venom into the into the body, and as a result, the person would die. That was the process. Now they realized they had sinned. Okay, and they asked God for forgiveness. And the Moses told God about their repentance, and God said, "Okay, that's not a problem." Now that they realize, I'm going to do something. And God made a way for them to recover. What did God do? God asked Moses to make a fiery snake. Something that looks like what was biting them. Make it of a bronze. And get on a tree where everyone could see it. And announce if you have been beaten by any snake look up to the serpent on the pole look up to the bronze serpent on on the pole if you look you will live even though you have been beaten by the snake you will not die even though you have been beaten by the snake you will not die and the bible say as many people who were beaten by the snake and looked at the you know at the snake that was on the pole they lived that's what we're looking at look and live now ask yourself why did god not take away the snake why didn't god take away the snakes maybe that would have made sense right you they sinned he sent snakes then they repented he should have taken away the snakes he didn't the snakes were still free to operate but there was a solution so for those who were not smart for those who were not for those who, who felt moses didn't moses was doing something that didn't make sense i mean we are talking about god you know take away the snakes and you are saying we should be looking at one pole they will they they will just keep dying 
there was many who were foolish in court, who were foolish enough to believe the something, the, the, you know, what Moses did, which didn't make sense. Hanging one snake on a pole for me to look at. What is the relationship between looking at one snake on the pole and living? As many who believed, even though it didn't make sense, they lived. Those who felt it was nonsense, they died. And the same thing is happening now. Jesus Christ has been sent to come and die for the sins of the world. The Lord God sent Jesus as the propitiation for our sin, for the sin of the of, of the whole world. God didn't take away sin from the earth, but He provided the way out from the penalty of sin. So, if you are interested in deliverance if you don't want the 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 venom of sin to produce death in your life jesus christ is the one to embrace jesus christ is the similitude is actually the is is the is the pole is the snake on the pole now because jesus said just as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so shall the son of man shall be lifted up and everyone that looks at him will be we live will be saved so sin is still in the world but there is a solution you don't have to be beaten and you don't have to die jesus christ has been provided okay it's very important i mentioned that don't wait until when sin we until when all in all manners of sin we leave the earth it's not happening now it's not happening the head is condemned to sin sin will always remain here because the devil is still roaming about and he's the tempter and what's the job of a tempter his job is to tempt and when you fall that means sin but there is a serpent on the pole your job is just to look and live isn't that simple enough now it's important to know that the sinner has a responsibility the sinner has a role to play in the curing process i just mentioned that to you there is a responsibility if you really want to be free from the serpents before the lord gave the solution to the people of israel who were being punished for their sin what did they do they first acknowledge their sin numbers 21 7 they say we have sinned proverbs 28 13 says if you cover your sin you will not prosper but if you confess you're going to have mercy you confess and forsake you obtain mercy so the first thing is i have sinned they acknowledge they didn't cover it that's one role that the sinner has to play you have to know that your the punishment for your sin is as a result of your sin you must acknowledge the fact that you are you have sinned secondly they took a step by asking for forgiveness first they acknowledge that they are sinned they also ask god for forgiveness they repented they confess their sin and they ask for forgiveness and deliverance they express their need for a solution even in their pains numbers 21 7 and the lord hearkened unto them thirdly they accepted the forgiveness and the deliverance and they were free number one they acknowledge their sin secondly they've asked for forgiveness they confess the sin they didn't just acknowledge and just sit down there they did something about it they confess their sin they asked god for forgiveness and deliverance and they accepted the solution the lord gave they accepted the fact that the glove forgave them they accepted the forgiveness and the deliverance and the method of deliverance the lord sent to them as many who looked at that snake on the pole they lived numbers 21 8 to 9 those who looked lived those who did not look died so it wasn't actually the snake that was now killing them it was now their decision whether to look or not to look initially before they repented you know the serpent was just killing everybody but now they had repented their lord had forgiven them and he had made solution available to them now the responsibility became theirs so as many who who looked at the serpent on the pole they lived as many who did not they died when they shouldn't have died the solution was there that's why the bible says in that john 3 16 it for if you believe in him you should not perish you shouldn't but if you don't you've already embraced 
destruction. That's the way it works. Okay, so it's very important. Acknowledge the fact that you have sinned. Don't hide it. Don't cover it up. Don't explain your sin away. Sin is not meant to be explained away. Acknowledge. Ask for forgiveness. Forsake your sins. And accept the forgiveness the Lord is bringing your way. And accept the solution for your liberation, which is Jesus Christ. The only cure for sin he has provided. No other way. There is no other name by which any man can be saved except through the name of Jesus. Acts 4.12 Okay, now in this dispensation, like I said, Jesus Christ is the brazen serpent hung on the tree for us. That's why he was crucified on the tree. That's why, you know, he, he, you know, they hung him. He was, he was hung, he was hung on a tree. He was hung on a tree for everyone to look at. The same way that serpent was hung on a tree for everyone to look at on a pole. So Jesus Christ is the brazen serpent hung on the tree for us. John chapter 3, 14 to 15 and 16 to 17. John chapter 3, 14 to 15 and 16 to 17. You can read it up there. So as the Israelites of old were only, only required to look at the young serpent and live, so are we to look unto Jesus and live. So you have to look away from the snakes. You have to look away from sin. You have to look away from the bites. Even though the, the biting is happening, the sicknesses, the diseases, all the agents of death are already operating in your life. Don't bother. Look away from what you are passing through. Look away from the bites. Look away from the sores. Look away from the injuries. Look away from those who have already died. Look away from your pains and agony. Just look unto Jesus. That's all you need to live. That's all. Only believe. John 3, 16 to 17. And Hebrews 12, 2. Hebrews 12 says, looking unto Jesus. That's all. Don't look at what you are passing through. Don't look at your penalty. Don't look at your pain. Don't look at the punishment. Don't look at the suffering. Don't look at what your sin has brought into your life. Get out of that and look unto Jesus. Even though the snake had beaten those people, they just needed to look and they were they lived. The venom was neutralized just by looking. For God's sake, looking. Look and what's difficult in that? That's the word of the Lord for you today. No matter what sin has done in your life, no matter what penalty has arrived, I mean, no matter what penalty is going on in your life, no matter what sin has done to you, no matter the kind of bondage you currently are in because of sin, no matter the sickness, no matter what is happening in your life by reason of your own errors, by reason of your sin, no matter what the devil is doing in your life because of your sins, no matter the judgment that has been passed, passed over your life, only look unto Jesus. Believe in Him. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. You will live. You won't die. The soul that sinned shall die. But when you look unto Jesus, you will live. He said, Look and live. That's all. It's my prayer for you that the wisdom to look unto Jesus will come upon you. The grace to stop explaining and excusing your sins away. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus. If you are still there, you are still sinning, you are writing letters to serpents that will bite and the biting will lead to death. If you are if you are not being beaten already, if the serpents are not they are not biting you already, you are you know you have you have not started seeing the judgment of your sin. That doesn't mean sin does not have judgment. Sin will ultimately lead to death. So I'm encouraging you now to get out of that life and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. That's how to look and live. So you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You want to be free from the venom and the sting of sin. You want to be free from all these satanic bites. You want to live a life of freedom in Christ Jesus. You are going to say this prayer after me wherever you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Remember in Numbers 21, they had, to, they had to acknowledge their sin first. So say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. And that's why I need your salvation. Please come into my life today. Wash away all my sins. 
and set me free from every bondage that sin has attracted into my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Please write my name in the book of life and help me to live for you alone from now onward. Also fill me with your Holy Spirit and don't let me ever become a powerless Christian. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for showing us this scripture. And thank you, Father, for the exposition, for the understanding. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for your children. Your counsel has been delivered to them already. Father, I pray for as many as are out there who need to look in order to live, grant them the grace to do this in the name of Jesus. Everyone who is currently suffering from one penalty, one bondage, or one punishment or the other by reason of their sinful life, Lord, have mercy on them. Like Moses begged God, and God forgave those children of Israel. Lord, I beg you on behalf of these ones, forgive them in the name of Jesus. And we know you have made provision for, uh, for the solution to all this judgment, which is Jesus Christ. The grace for these ones to embrace Jesus, release upon them also in the name of Jesus. Set them free from the penalty of their sins in the name of Jesus. And for your children who have decided to look now so that they can live, as many who have decided to surrender their life to Jesus, Lord, accept them in the beloved. Wash away all their sins. In the name of Jesus, take away the punishment of their sins from their lives. Erase their names from the book of death and write their names in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. And beginning from now, grace to live for Jesus alone may come upon these ones. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, if you said that prayer, I want to congratulate you. You are now born again. You are a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. So to learn more about this new life, I want to encourage you to start reading your Bible. You know, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Study the Word of God. You know, follow the teachings of Jesus. Read about everything, all the teachings of Jesus and apply them to your life. And also, if you want materials that can help you become well established in the Lord, you can just visit our website at www.glam.org www.gloem.org there are publications there you know that can help you become well established in the lord uh, if you also want to be part of our weekly online bible study that holds every sunday 5 to 6 p.m mountain time and uh, it's entirely online we use a zoom application for the for the meeting so all you need to do is to just uh, click on the banner on top of the home page on our website that will take you straight to the room where the meeting is uh, holding and somebody's going to admit you in into the bible study also every sunday 5 to 6 p.m mountain time uh it would be wonderful if you make yourself available to be part of this uh, great uh meeting then feel free to follow us on uh, social media do that uh, follow us on facebook twitter instagram uh connect with us on linkedin you know like our pages so that you can keep abreast of important spiritual updates as they become available and if you wish to communicate to us you want to you know reach out to us for any reason at all you can do that send us an email using uh, info at glam.org info at glam.org or simply drop us a voice message using the same platform you are listening with now we would like to hear from you and the lord will bless you mightily he will cause his light to shine in every aspect of your life in the name of jesus so thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of glenn podcast it's been a wonderful time in god's presence so if you have been blessed by this particular episode or probably the previous ones please feel free to share with others around you so that they also can be partakers of what the lord is doing we'll be here again uh, next week for yet another episode if the lord has not returned until that next week keep enjoying your freedom in christ jesus god bless you Bye.